All right, how's it going everybody? Today, let's talk paint stripping. All the different options you have out there, there are many forms of paint stripping. You got chemical strippers like the uh, Clean Strip Aircraft Stripper, which is uh, one of my favorites, mostly because it's the only stupid one you can buy out here locally that I have found. There's mechanical stripping, there's hand stripping, there's uh, uh, soda blasting or bead blasting, walnut shelling or whatever the heck else it's called. Many different ways to go about this stuff. Well, what are some of the ways that I like to go about it? Let me show you. This guy right here is my buffer. But, I've got a 36 grit uh, disc on here. It is used quite heavily, it's very dull. Not that I'm advertising for these guys, but this is where I happen to buy it from. This I got from a Home Depot. So I think I paid like four or five bucks for this two pack here. And the ones from the auto parts store were like a lot more expensive. So I just went with this, it does the same job. It's just not from a name you probably would recognize. Put this thing on the buffer. Since this is a used piece of 36 grit, it's gonna be a lot more mild to take this stuff down. Now, the other option that I did was on the Camaro, I used a chemical stripper, which is the air, uh, aircraft clean strip. You can use that. What I like to do is I like to put it on here, get it relatively started, and then come back and grind all this other stuff off. Um, the other alternative route is if you get your stuff sandblasted or bead blasted, walnut shelled, whatever you want to call it these days, uh, you would want to hurry up, get the car over to wherever you're going to be spraying it as fast as possible so you can clean off the metal, sand it all uh, probably with like 180 and then hit it with 80 grit, and then uh, spray a good thick coat of epoxy primer so you can seal it and kind of examine it from there. But anyways, today let's talk about mechanical stripping. There's a couple of different ways to go about it. You can use the 36 grit, 80 grit on your rotary buffer. Like I'm going to show you, they also make a 3M system, which has uh, like this, I don't know what to call it. It's like an 80 grit equivalent sort of stripping disc. That works pretty bitchin'. Um, and then they have like a little red scotch bright pad that cleans up the metal. It puts like a, I don't know, probably like a 320 grit scratch in it. And that works pretty cool. Um, I've only used it once. I'd like to buy it again, but this way seems to be a little bit cheaper, a little easier, uh, and it's readily available no matter where you go. So uh, let me put you up on my little whack tripod today because my tripod's missing. So I'm gonna have to try and make do with what I got. So let's get started, shall we? So I was just about to tell you what uh, some safety equipment that you need. A little dusk mask and maybe some gloves. And uh, my mom came out handed me my tripod. She hid it from me. Why? Anyways, let me get you set up on this thing and then we'll get started. Because I'm in an open area, and what I mean by that is I am outside, okay? You can probably get away without using a mask. Uh, I'm not gonna take that chance. I'm just gonna put one on anyways, just for the heck of it. Now, we've got our rotary buffer here with our worn out piece of 36 grit. And I'm probably just going to set it to the number two here, which might be, I think my minimum speed is 600 RPM. So that might be, oh, I don't know, a thousand maybe, something like that. Dust mask on. And let the stripping begin. Now, 
probably noticed something. I didn't have my buffer just sitting in one spot. I was kind of spazzing out quite a bit. And the reason why, because you're using a buffer here, it's kind of like buffing your panel. If you stay in one spot too long, you're going to burn it. Same principle here is if I stay too long on these spots, I can probably heat up the metal enough that I can warp it. And already just by touching it, I think even then I didn't move around enough because this is kind of warm here. And especially since this is off a uh, oh, 2004, 2005 RX-8, whatever. These newer cars, look at that. I'm not sure how well you can see that. I can already push the panel in. It's like tin canning on us here. So. This is basically what you want to do on stripping your panel. Now, this grit is not really, this particular piece is a little worn out. Oh, look at that, see? Look at that, that's nasty. So I'm gonna go get a new piece of uh, that 36 grit over there and then we're gonna come back and really just strip this thing down. I'll okay, got myself a new piece of 36 grit, same thing. What I'm probably going to end up doing is strip it and get all this old body filler out of here that I did the wrong way. Okay, it doesn't feel hot, but it feels a little touch warm. So we're gonna walk away for a few minutes and come back to it. All right, it's been about five minutes. Feels cool to the touch again. So let's pick it back up. As you guys noticed, I was really concentrating in here and in here. And if you can see that, the damage in there is uh, quite catastrophic. All this fat ridge here. Now, I had said before, I purposely did this the wrong way just to show you what would happen. And if you remember, that crack was right around here. There was a few in that area. And I think there was like that little weird thing going on here. So, to me, it's a good idea to get yourself a practice piece so you can experiment with what works and what doesn't work. Obviously, you can't get away with this. I mean, look at that, huh? That's way more than uh, what the uh, manufacturers recommend you put on for filler. Okay, I've stripped it to a point where I'm happy with it. Let me blow it off and then we'll take a look at it. Ah! OK, 
Okay, you can see right here quite obviously. This thing was uh, hit pretty bad at one point. I actually know how it happened, but uh, <laughs> if John's ever on my channel one day, he can tell you the story better than I can. So uh, this is what we're working with here. This is way more than a quarter of an inch. All right, guys, this is ridiculous. And I did this just to see what the heck would happen. All this right in here. I think what's appropriate to do from here and this is probably going to be a good investment, is that uh, I'm probably going to save up and get a stud gun so we can pull out all that stuff. I have used a stud gun in the past. Uh, the shop I was at for that week that I told you guys that story about, uh, I used his stud gun. I didn't quite like it. It was uh, some Harbor Freight thing. and eh, I don't know. I didn't like it. But uh, the other one that I have used was uh, at a buddy of mine's house. and It was... Uh, was it a stinger or stingray or something like that? I don't know what else it was called, but anyways. This is where we're at with the door. I don't think I can probably get behind this and knock it out. Oh. Nah, I don't know. Maybe. I still think a stud gun is probably a smart investment to have anyways. But uh, this is what you got to do if you're going to paint your car. At least I think if you're going to restore it and uh, you're not sure what's underneath. I have used this door for quite a many of things. I used it for purple single stage and then I had some kind of, I think this is primer, and then uh, some smurf blue single stage. And uh, this is my experiment door. I think it's a good idea to go get one. That's exactly what I did not want to do. Huh, look at that. Oh well. So there it is guys, that's how I strip my panels. I just use a rotary buffer, 80 grit or 36 grit in this case, and just take it all to metal. You wanna move kind of sporadically. You don't wanna sit there and like how I did trying to get the filler out of here. You don't ever wanna do that if you're just, if it's just metal, cause uh, you will warp it. And uh, kind of seems, I did, kind of tin can it a little bit, but I got a shrinking hammer, so I'll try and get this all taken care of. Don't add your filler over a painted surface. Add it over metal only. I don't care if you're using premium filler or cheap filler, just don't do it. Add it over metal all the time. Polyester glazing putty, yes, you can put that over primer, a painted surface, and you can get away with it that way, but <sighs> add it over metal. Come on, don't do what I do. And what I did I'm not saying I do it anymore but uh, yeah don't do what I did on this thing just to see what happens if you got a test door okay yeah try it out see what happens but uh, that's what we have for this door 36 grit on a rotary buffer in this case we use it as a grinder and this is what you get so this is how I strip my panels down to a metal to restore them uh, Aircraft stripper also works pretty sweet. Um, please wear gloves when you use that stuff because it will burn your skin. Um, eye protection is also a great idea. Uh, maybe even a, a respirator because that stuff does stink. And uh, I've seen some folks that uh, get around that stuff and they breathe it and they kind of feel a little nauseous afterwards. So uh, that's something to take precaution with. If you guys have any questions about stripping your panels, uh, let me know. Like I said before, you can use those 3M discs, uh, and they were pretty sweet. I prefer doing it this way because it's a lot cheaper and uh, kind of gets you the same exact results. So those are the three ways that I know about doing it with just mechanically stripping, doing it with aircraft stripper alone, or a combination of the two. So. Always strip your panels if you're going to restore your car, so uh, that way you're guaranteed you know it's done right. So anyways guys, if you wish to connect with me socially, you can find me on Facebook, Twitter, Google+, Instagram, Tumblr, and Blogger, which all the respective links can be found down below. If you like this video, please hit the thumbs up button, subscribe if you are not already subscribed to this channel, and uh, like always, take care, stay safe, I'll see you next time.